Hello, honors Bruins, and we're going to uh, continue talking about cellular respiration. And now, in this screencast, we'll talk more about Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Okay, and basically aerobic respiration. That's when you have oxygen. Okay. Um, so again, remember you, there are three processes in cellular respiration. When you have oxygen, you have glycolysis, which takes that six carbon glucose, breaks it down to a three carbon molecule, producing a little bit of ATP, only about two, and two NADH, which will go to the third process, electron transfer chain. And if there is oxygen, it'll go into the mitochondria, and the matrix of the mitochondria is where the Krebs cycle will take place. And the Krebs cycle, again, will break down that glucose molecule, uh, releasing it as carbon dioxide, and just producing, again, one ATP per cycle, um, or you could say two ATPs per glucose molecule. And But you produce a lot of uh, NAD and FADH, which will go to the electron transport chain, where this is the phase where you need oxygen, and the oxygen is pulling those electrons, and when it accepts that electrons, it becomes water, and uh, again, forming uh, a lot of ATPs, and we'll talk about that later on, how it does that. So it produces about 32 um, ATPs. Now, after glycolysis, if oxygen is present, they'll do aerobic respiration, and it'll go into Krebs cycle. And if there's no oxygen, then it's what's called anaerobic respiration. Okay, and this is what we're going to talk about, Krebs cycle. So basically, um, that pyruvate, after forming from glu glycolysis in the cytoplasm, goes into the mitochondria. And it's further broken down, and all the, those electrons from those bonds being broken are picked up by our NADH and our another electron carrier called FADH. So this three carbon molecule goes into the mi mitochondria. One of these carbons is lost as CO2 goes out into the atmosphere. That's what you're exhaling. And elect some electrons are picked up by NADH. And that two carbon molecule is attached to a molecule of co coenzyme A, a very reactive molecule. The end becomes acetyl-CoA. Now this two carbon molecule acetyl-CoA will go into the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle is also known as the citric acid cycle. And here you have this four carbon molecule will combine with this two carbon molecule and then form a six carbon citric acid cycle. And slowly throughout the cycle, a carbon is lost as carbon dioxide and electrons are picked up by NAD plus to become NADH. And then another electron is lost and you get a five carbon compound and you pick up more electrons by NAD plus to become NADH to make a little bit of ATP. And then you have to recycle that four carbon molecule that you started with, so rearranging that molecule. Again, you lose some electrons, which are this time picked up by FAD to make FADH2. And again, more electrons by NAD+. So this whole entire Krebs cycle, per cycle, you produced one ATP, and you produced, uh, if you're counting this, uh, you produced four. NADH, which includes this intermediate step, and you produce one FADH2 and um, and six CO2s, or or should I say three CO2s and two cycles will give you six. Um, carbon dioxide molecule. So this is per cycle. So multiply that by two because you have two pyruvate acids going into the cycle. So again, this is per cycle. And if you want to say per glucose molecules, mul uh, multiply that by two. So you have two ATPs, eight NADH, two FAD, and six CO2. So here you can see that sugar molecule is totally broken down. And all the energy is basically picked up by these electron carriers. 
So again, another way to uh, look at this here is after glycolysis, you have this three carbon molecule, pyruvic acid, which is broken down to a two carbon molecule and attaches to this coenzyme A and becomes a very reactive molecule called acetyl-CoA. And again, losing that carbon as CO2 and electrons picked up by NADH. And you have then that acetyl-CoA goes into the citric acid cycle where you start with this four carbon compound called oxal acetate and becomes a citric acid, a six carbon molecule. And slowly that six carbon molecule will further be broken down and, and recycle that four carbon molecule is started with. So again, per cycle, producing three carbon dioxides, one ATP, one FADH, and four NADH. So again, where does it happen? Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. The Krebs cycle happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. And then the last enzymes for electron transport change are located in the inner mitochondrial membrane, or even we call that Christe. Okay. And then here's our graphic organizer for a Krebs cycle. And again, uh, use this graphic organizer to kind of review your uh, Krebs cycle. So again, you start with pyruvic acid. You lose one of the carbon as CO2, pick up electrons and become NADH, and you end up with a compound called acetyl-CoA. Okay. And it's a very reactive carbon molecule. We'll, f we'll enter the cycle and and releasing a lot of CO2, picking up those electrons and becoming NADH, and again you lose another CO2, picking up electrons, making a little bit of ATP, and more electrons are picked up. Okay, so basically completely uh, breaking down our glucose molecule. Now, once you have broken down the glucose molecule and you produce a lot of those electron uh, carriers, those electron carriers will go into the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And here you have a series of proteins, and these proteins uh, will do is this N our NADH is going to lose its electrons, or we say it's um, oxidized when it loses the electron, becomes NAD+. And that electron, as it's lost, the protein will pick it up and pass it down to a series of proteins. But when this ele electron is picked up, uh, it releases energy. And this energy is used to pump these hydrogen ions or protons across the membrane. So as these electrons are being passed, we pump uh, protons or hydrogen ions. So a series of proteins will pass that electrons and again use that energy to pump that hydrogen into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. And, by, and then the very last electron acceptor is our oxygen. And our oxygen, when it accepts electron, becomes water. And then FAD also comes in, but just comes in a little later. FAD will just come a, li a little later on the electron transport chain. And it gives up its electron. So from FADH2, it becomes FAD. And so what the whole purpose of electron transport chain is using all this energy to create a high concentration gradient of hydrogen ions or protons. So you're going to have a lot of hydrogen ions here. Now, why are we doing this? Why create this high concentration gradient of hydrogen? Because later on, if you uh, saw this, this hydrogen gradient is going this energy is going to be used uh, uh, to convert ADP plus phosphate into ATP. And this is what we call chemoosmosis. So through chemoosmosis, so here you have an enzyme called ATP synthase. And it'll take this hydrogen, and as the hydrogen goes, it, ru it runs like a, like a turbine in a wheel, this motor. And that energy is used to convert ADP plus phosphate to ATP. Okay, and where oxygen goes from high concentration to low, and this is an example of facilitated diffusion, uh, where the energy here was used to establish the gradient, and here, by uh, 
chemoosmosis, the hydrogen goes from the intermembrane space into the matrix, and that energy is again used to phosphorylate this ADP to make ATP. Here's an energy uh, um, electron transport graphic organizer. Notice I made it like a step uh, to show that as the electrons are being passed down, you kind of lose energy or falls energy, and then the last electron acceptor is your oxygen, and when it accepts the electron, it becomes water. So without oxygen, all this is not going to happen. So that's why we breathe oxygen. And of course, as electrons are being passed, we pump hydrogen in the intermembrane space of the mitochondria, establishing a high proton gradient. And this proton gradient will be then used to make ATP by chemoosmosis by the ATP synthase. Okay. So again, uh, concentrate on where is it happening? Again, it's happening at the inner membrane and the matrix. It also involves intermembrane space. That's where the hydrogen gradient is created. So what do you need? You need our electron carriers that have all that energy. Uh, we need oxygen and we need, um, of course, hydrogen ions. Products make about 32 ATPs and the last electron acceptor becomes water. So basically concentrate on in cellular respiration is what do you need, what do you get at the end, and where is it happening to make ATP. So all the energy in a glucose molecule is in those bonds, and when those bonds are broken, what happens? So again, phase one is glycolysis. What do you need in glycolysis? You need glucose and a little bit of ATP, and we need ADP to convert that to ATP, and you need NAD+. What do you get at the end? You get a three-carbon molecule called pyruvic acid. Make a little bit of NADH and about two ATPs. It happens in the cytoplasm. We also call it cytosol. You'll see, you'll see both words. And the second phase is a Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And you need pyruvic acid and NAD plus and FAD and enzyme CoA. And what do you produce? We lose that carbon as carbon dioxide. Make a lot of those electron carriers. And we make a little bit of ATP. And it happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. And last phase is our electron transport chain. Okay, and here we need our electron carriers that has all that energy. And of course, we need our oxygen. And we make about 32 ATPs in this phase. And we get water. And it happens in the inner membrane. Also involves the matrix, the mitochondria, and the intermembrane space. Okay. And that summarizes the three phases of the cellular respiration.